Hey guys, what's growing? It's Heather at Bush Poppy Farm. And as you just saw, we've been busy at the farm. Uh, the kids and Mike came out with me yesterday evening to get a whole bunch of stuff done. I've been feeling very unwell and so um, had missed a lot of days, obviously not filming either. And um, so they offered to come out and help me uh, get some stuff done out there. So um, kids and I got, you know, the irrigation replaced and the one bed that we're going to, I'm going to transplant into probably tomorrow. Um, we, uh, st Mike string trimmed the farm. Uh, there's a few places I need to go back and hit. We just ran out of battery power. Um, and then the kids helped me put up um, the flower support netting that was missing. And I wish I had used it. I totally forgot to use it on the spring stuff. And there's some stuff in there that's falling over, like the status and things that could have used some support. So I'm going ahead and installing it uh, now. I do have uh, two more beds to add the netting to um, in the high tunnel. So now, um, this morning I went back out there and I harvested what I could. I came here and harvested what I could. It's just, it's, it's been a really hard farming year. Really hard. Uh, we are still 10 to 15 degrees below normal temperatures and we've hardly had any sun for weeks <laughs> and weeks. Um, generally in the, California often uh, suffers something we call the May gray and the gloom or June gloom, which is uh, if you're anywhere near the coasts, um, you get lots of fog and stuff like that and, it, and it's cooler temperatures. Um, but this has persisted for a really long time and uh, it's basically slowing everything down. Um, so normally this time of year, uh, almost mid-June, I should be harvesting the first of the zinnias. Um, I planted at the usual time and my zinnia plants are still only this tall. Um, basically things are not dying, but they're just not growing uh, much at all. So it's been a real struggle uh, for the flower business, at least for me, um, being able to produce enough to meet my client needs. So um, yeah, it's, it's been hard. I have lots of stuff planted, but you know, um, when the weather doesn't cooperate, there's only so much you can do. So I'm really hoping that we'll get some sun by the end of this week um, so that things will start to grow. We'll probably be close to our average, normal average temperatures by the end of this week, which is great. Um, and then hopefully things will take off. I was supposed to have a you pick at the farm this weekend. Um, it is the second time this this date is the second one I've had to reschedule uh, and now I'm gonna have to reschedule this one because there's just nothing to harvest um, a handful of sunflowers maybe that's about it so um, it, it feels bad it feels bad because I hate going back to customers and telling them whoops sorry I mean I know that's the nature of farming but not everybody understands that um, so yeah it, it feels I feel like it makes me look bad like I don't know what I'm doing and um, I don't know. It's just, it's just a, a yucky feeling. So, um, I really hope that things grow enough so that I can do my summer evenings on the farm because I have people signed up for those. Those are like date evenings where you can come and pick and have a picnic lunch or dinner that, um, is part of the package. And, um, yeah, I, I hope there's going to be stuff for them to harvest. I think the first one is at the end of this month and that's not looking that great. Uh, maybe in July, I hope, <laughs> because honestly, at this point, I don't know where I'm going to get flowers. Um, I, if I'd known the weather was going to be like this, I would have just planted a whole bunch of spring stuff again. <laughs> However, obviously you can't predict what things are going to be doing in the future. So anyway, I'm, I'm sorry for that rant. Thank you for listening. What I'm doing right now, <clears throat> I just spent the last uh, almost two hours uh, deeply watering all the house plants and I gathered up the ones that need help. Um, so I'm gonna be uh, changing out pots and soil and potting up some cuttings that I've taken um, to get them all settled in to go back in the house. So let's show you what we're gonna be doing today.
Okay, the first one I want to take care of is this Kalanchoe. <laughs> it looks, yeah, it's blooming and it's nice and deep and green, but there's like hardly any soil left in this pot. I mean, look at that. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to scrape off what's left, put it in a brand new pot with fresh soil. And I think it will be much happier. Um, I mean, it's, it's doing okay, but I don't think that's going to last long. So it's time to fix that. The other thing that I've been, every time I water it, I look at it and think, oh my gosh, I've got to take care of this, is, um, is this guy, this Monstera. So it's doing all right, uh, but it's been in this pot for a couple of years. And, you know, you could see the browning on the leaves. And even though it was getting, you know, throwing out long, long, long stems, it was, it was scraggly stems. Uh, and the soil looks awful. So we're going to take this out of its pot, clean off most of the soil because it's really old. Um, it's probably super leached and maybe has some salts in it from buildup of fertilizer. And then we will repot it. Uh, I'll use the same pot, but I will clean the pot. Then... I have all of these little jars full, I have two more of these, full of uh, spider plant cuttings that I took off of a, one of my spider plants had a billion babies and I just, this is like two months ago I did this, I cut them off and put them in this water so as you can see they have really nice root systems now and it's time for them to go into some soil. So I'll do that and then I also have some cuttings from the Monstera. Uh, which have nice long root systems on them now. So those are also going to go into soil. Um, they'll be, so the thing with these cuttings is um, I'm not going to put them in a huge pot. I'm going to put them in a small pot um, so that they can slowly start taking over that space. Um, plants don't really dig it when you take something like this size and put it in a huge pot because you're thinking, well, it's going to get big. Yes, but it's better to start with a small pot and slowly grow up. For some reason, that just tells the plant, um, I don't know, makes it more comfy. Maybe they like to be cozy. <laughs> so with the spider plant babies, because I've got a bunch of them, I think I have seven or eight of them, I actually am probably going to put two or three or even four in a single pot. Um, and then that will populate it and they'll do fine. All right, so I have just bagged potting soil that I'm going to use. And I have some starter fertilizer that I'll also put in there because we are traumatizing the plant by taking it out of these pots that they're currently in and messing with the roots and everything. And then, so we want to give it some extra nutrition and then we're going to soak it really, really well and get the, um, the soil nice and wet. Uh, the Kalanchoe particularly is very hydrophobic at this point. Now it is a succulent type of plant, so it doesn't want to sit in water, but it also doesn't want bone dry soil. And uh, that soil is so hydrophobic that even watering it um, isn't going to do anything. So I'm going to clear away as much as possible, put it in a new thing of, of damp soil so that the roots can slowly start to integrate that, that moisture and then it should be good to go. All right, let's get started.
Okay, so let's take a look and I think it's a big improvement. Okay, so here are our potted up plants. Back here we have a little pot with three um, Monstera cuttings in it and those will have space to grow and I'll start to stake them as they get bigger. Here is a pot with, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, I think, um, spider plant cuttings in it. That's looking good. Here's the up-potted Monstera, definitely better with soil. And I um, actually tied the whole thing up much better than it was when I got it from the store and I never really adjusted. So this I think will help it a whole lot. And then finally we have the Kalanchoe, which looks oh, so much better. I had to soak both the Kalanchoe and the Monstera um, root balls because they were completely hydrophobic. Um, so I soaked them in water for a bit to um, get the water going again. Uh, now the roots will be able to start taking up water and nutrition. And everybody got a little bit of um, starter fertilizer. So just because it's summer doesn't mean I'm not still starting seeds. Uh, it's just in smaller amounts. I'll show you what I started uh, yesterday or two days ago and what's going to go out with me tomorrow to transplant into the farm. Okay, so these are actually for the home garden. This is a uh, butter crunch lettuce, Tulsi basil, and a sweet banana pepper. Um, uh, botanical interest is having a sale, seed sale. So I just grabbed a couple of packets of things that I didn't currently have and have started those. So it's all good. They should be germinating anytime now. Here we have a tray of more celosia. I've got uh, coral reef, fruit punch, Texas plume mix, Texas plume, vintage rose, and then some uh, digitalis or um, foxglove, snow thimble. Then on this side I've got more baby's breath, uh, covent garden, and some zinnia oklahoma ivory and dark opal basil. These guys are uh, very slow to grow. Um, but it's about time to go on and transplant them. They'll take off once I transplant them. Um, this is cinnamon basil here and cardinal basil. I already have some basils planted out at the farm. I might put these in at the home farm. This is pink beauty amaranth. Uh, jewels of opar, which I've always wanted to grow but haven't had luck with in the past. And then this is saponaria. Um, and then back here is didiscus, lacy pink, and lacy white. So those need to go in. Now out here we've got a whole bunch of Beringium that I need to find a place for. And then here's a tray that's going to be transplanted tomorrow. Celosia Pampas Plume, Century Red, Chief Persimmon, Chief Mix. And then um, Baby's Breath here, Covent Garden, another succession. We'll do multiple successions of this um, to uh, keep it going throughout the rest of the season. And then Zinnias in Wine, Deep Red, and cactus flower mix. So, uh, like I said, I've been feeling pretty crappy, so um, haven't been filming too much. I will be doing um, a June garden tour for the home garden, as well as a farm tour for you guys this week, because those are um, low maintenance videos and uh, easier for me to do. And uh, yeah, just keep you posted on what's going on. Keep your fingers crossed that we get some more sun. The sun's actually really trying to come out right now. Um, we just, we need it. We need the sun and we need um, some warmer temperatures. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a wonderful time in your garden and things are actually going much better for you than they are for me. <laughs> and I will see you in the next one. Bye.